Obi-Wan Kenobi Part 4 So this episode picks up where Part 3 ended and Obi-Wan Kenobi is in one of those healing tanks uh, kind of similar to the one that Boba Fett was in where if you're wounded, if any cuts or bruises or burns you are put inside this tank and it's supposed to heal your wounds up and they have like the wee like a mouthpiece that he can breathe through uh, so that he doesn't drown in the water while he's unconscious he wakes up and goes to the surface of the tank and he literally says to the lady that was uh, that rescued him in the previous episode that uh, he has to get Princess Leia back and she's like no no you you have to heal up first and he's like I, I, it doesn't show if he heals up or not you know if he waste if he heals up then goes out there it looks more like he just gets up and goes uh, he doesn't wait until he's healed up because there's too much at stake here you know he has to protect you know Luke Skywalker's sister and he's determined to do that it shows Princess Leia and at first I thought this was the Mustafar or Mustafar where they're at Darth Vader's castle but I'm not entirely sure if it is Mustafar or not because um, Mustafar I think is a planet that's covered entirely with lava you know whereas this planet here had water it's, it's been built in the sea I'm not sure um, so she's being interrogated by the High, Inquis the High Inquisitor I think she's looking to know the whereabouts of Kenobi she wants to know where he is and Princess Leia like, won't say I think it's that, I'm not entirely sure she wants uh, information and Princess Leia just will not give in so um, High Inquisitor has just had enough of this and has uh, two, two of the guards grab Princess Leia and put her into this trap this torture device I don't know what the device was going to do but there was these arms that were coming in and I thought what uh, are these gonna like you know blind or something are they gonna poke her in the eye or is she gonna get electrocuted here until she breaks I don't know uh, doesn't specify what the device does that episode <laughs> so um the plan is uh, the woman that's with Kenobi she's gonna like uh, smuggle him in while still being undercover as um, working for Vader and the Empire and she basically she tells him how to get in he, he sneaks in and she's going about you know trying to create a distraction you know trying to keep everybody away so that Kenobi can make his way through undetected and get Leia in get go and get Leia and get her out I mean, before anybody clocks on that he's even there and he goes through this corridor and it has like these tanks of you know what looks like dead Jedi's uh, they're all like their bodies are being preserved and put on display I think and Kenobi is just horrified whenever he sees this here you know that that could have been him but uh, he gets the uh, even bigger shock when he reaches the end and one of the bodies is of a child a uh, little boy that was just uh, killed and it looks like they were all they're all frozen like they're all killed they're, they're all like in the same position that they were killed in and they look very much alive you know their bodies are well reserved but they're, they're gone they're not there anymore and Kenobi eventually hears Princess Leia screaming whenever she's put into the trap and he makes his way towards her so it shows her in the trap and it's it shows uh, it, it's dark there's some lights and all you see is like uh, Princess Leia two guards and then Blue lightsaber is ignited and kills one guard, but you don't see Kenobi. You don't see him come or go from what I saw. And then the next guard, uh, blue lightsaber again, ignites and he's taken out as well. So you don't see Kenobi running around or tiptoeing. You just see the lightsaber. And then after he's done them, he releases Princess Leia and uh, he goes to leave. At this point, um, the woman that was undercover helping... The woman that's helping Kenobi uh, is, is questioned by the High Inquisitor. Um, well, uh, what what happened was that Kenobi realised he was running out of time, and she created a distraction by requesting the High Inquisitor. And the High Inquisitor at this point has became suspicious of the woman and thinks that she might be, you know, a spy. Which yeah, she is at this point, and she tries to bullshit her, you know, that she's not. 
So um, she's about the hand whistler is about to use Jenny mind tricks to look into her mind and see if she's lying or not and what's going on there. And at this point, like the I think the alarm goes off, and then it cuts back to Kenobi. It, it actually it actually looks as if um, the woman's going to betray Kenobi. It, it it really does play into that there, but it's not the case. But it was it was nicely done. Cuts back to Kenobi and he's in this corridor with Princess Leia and he's just killing all the stormtroopers and all and the bl they were blasting at him and he was deflecting them and all and one of the blasts like hits the window and because that part of the base is underwater the seawater is starting to pour in slowly and then Kenobi uses the force to try and hold the glass together because if it break the more it breaks the more water is going to come in and it'll just flood the entire you know, room and they'll drown. So he's doing that there, and he shuts the door that the other stormtroopers are at to stop them from getting in. And then he manages to make his way towards the end and into the next room. Shuts the doors, and at that point the glass breaks, and the water, the seawater, just comes into the room and drowns the stormtroopers that were chasing them. So uh, he meets up with uh, your woman again, and she uh, goes to bring him to the ship. The High Inquisitor and other stormtroopers stop them. And are like you know the the woman's cover is blown. They now know that she really is uh, working for the rebels, and well, just not with them anymore. She's not with the emperor anymore. Doesn't work for them. And they are about to be killed or taken captive. And two other ships fly in and start blasting the place up, and that creates a distraction for Kenobi, Princess Leia, and your woman to run onto one of the ships and escape. So um, at this point, uh, Darth Vader comes out and he questions the High Inquisitor about her lack of uh, failure and all that stuff. He, he, he questions the High Inquisitor and rips in her for allowing them to escape, that she was sloppy. And she basically said that, oh, I, I planned that there, they were meant to escape, and that she put a tracker on them. But uh, it looked like she was lying to Vader just to you know, keep him happy, like, just to keep him off guard until she figures something out. But no, uh, the end of the episode shows that... Um, she put a tracker inside Princess Leia, a wee small robotic device, whatever it does, inside that. And they're completely unaware of it. So, at this point, the High Inquisitor knows where they are, and what planet, knows where they are, and will be coming for them at some point. So they're probably going to catch them all off guard. Uh, I, re I reckon this woman that's helping Kenobi will probably end up being killed. She never appeared in the years of trilogy, and she's just... Um, you can keep, whenever you watch enough film and TV shows, you can kind of tell like where, what direction a character and a storyline is going to go. She might not die. She might actually end up, you know, being fully loyal to the Emperor. You never know. Maybe she wants to kill Kenobi herself and uh, get the credit for it. Doesn't look like it, but hey, that'd be a hell of a twist if it was. And it, it's great to see Darth Vader again. You know, James Earl Jones is voicing him, and Hayden Christensen is wearing the suit. From what I know, uh, you've only seen Hayden Christensen as Anakin like once in the previous episode, so um, this will be in it'll be good to see where this goes. Uh, this episode I find probably the weakest one so far. Uh, it, it just uh, I didn't really enjoy it much. Like it's great seeing New McGregor as Obi Wan Kenobi. It's great seeing that there, but there's there's just nothing really intriguing, nothing really exciting. I mean, for me, it wasn't, and I felt that you know there, there's so much more they could explore. It, it kind of felt like it dragged out a bit, a bit too much. Uh, I feel that um, more could have been put into it. You know, it, it, they're taking their time with us here. It felt a, almost like a filler episode. Like they just like, there's more they want to show, but they don't want to show too much. I think that's what was going on there. But I, I will continue to watch the rest of the series here. I mean, it's I mean. It, episode 4, I mean I know it's only episode 4 but I'm intrigued I'm curious to see where this goes you know I'm, I'm really I'm looking forward to this big fight scene between Darth Vader and Kenobi the rematch of the century as it's called and I wonder, I wonder is it going to take place on Mustafar again? because that would bring the series round full circle or will it take place somewhere else? who knows? <sighs>